Hello everybody, this is Ray Cruzy, your Food Systems Program Coordinator and Master Gardener Coordinator with the ISU Extension and Outreach Office of Dubuque County. Today it is May 7th, 2020, just a few days before Mother's Day, and what a better time to be thinking about planting a pot of flowers than now. So that's what we're going to do today. And in thinking about planting those flowers, the first thing we need to think about is, is the location where those flowers are going to be all summer long. So here we are on the south side of my house, and it'll look a lot better once it's sighted, but this is where these flowers are going to be all summer long. And we're right here on top of our stoop. And the next thing to think about is our container. So we have selected this four and a half gallon ceramic pot that we're gonna use for our container that my wife and I got for our wedding. Now, this is one of those scenarios in life where bigger is always better. So if you can get a bigger pot on your front porch, it's going to be better for your flowers. And the reason why is because you're gonna have more soil mass in there and that increased soil mass gives more rooting and also gives less of a temperature variation throughout the summer for those roots and also gives less of a moisture variation. So you have more consistent temperatures and moisture which fares better for your plants that you're gonna plant in there. Now, after we've selected our container, the next thing I think about is our flowers. And this is the fun part, is going to the store and getting those flowers picked out. Now, when doing so, we need to think about our location where they're gonna be. Now, we're here on the south side of my house where it's full sun. And so we're gonna look for plants that need full sun to grow. And that's what we've chosen here. Here, we have an Angelonia in the back. We have a couple Calabracoas here on the side and a petunia here on the front. The next thing to think about is our growth habit of these plants. Now, typically in a pot, what we'll do is we'll stick higher growing items in the back. So this Angelonia is a prime example. And we're gonna stick more of the shrub type or semi-bush things in the front. And these might trail a little bit throughout the summer over the edge of the pot. And that's okay, that gives us a nice show, a nice effect. So that's what we aim for here, something higher in the back and something more of a semi-bush or semi-trailing uh, in the front. Another thing to think about too is our color combination. Now what we've done here is we've chosen primarily purples and it's gonna contrast really well with our house this summer once it's sighted. And then also we have uh, these calibracoas that are gonna bring out the little white accents that are in our more purple-like flowers of the petunias and the angelonia. So that's why we have chosen these plants today. Now, after that, what we're going to do is we're going to plant our actual uh, pot of flowers. And the first thing in doing so, we're going to look here at the bottom of the pot. We have this uh, drainage hole here, and that drainage hole down there is very important so that extra water in the pot when watering drains away from our plants and reduces any problems that we might have with our plant roots throughout the summer. So it's really important we have that, but it's also important that we plug that hole or, or cover that hole with a screen so that it doesn't get plugged with our potting mix. So what we're gonna do that with here is some screen. So this is a recycled fiberglass screen from one of our windows that, in our house that we're recycling. And this is what we're gonna use is that kind of like filter so it doesn't plug our drainage hole at the bottom of this pot. So that's really important. Now you also might be able to use gravel and that's a nice option. I like using that too, but I don't like sorting out the gravel at the end of the year when I dump the rest of this soil back into the garden or to the garden uh, when I want to bring the pots in for the winter. So I don't like sorting out those small gravelly pieces. So that's why I'm going with this mesh. You might be able to also use landscaping fabric. That would work great too. But I will add one rock to the pot. And this hollowed out rock here is just going to be an extra precaution to make sure that that hole down there doesn't have any potting mix that plugs it. So all the crevices underneath are gonna allow that water to kind of seep through and that'll work out great. Now, we're gonna look at our potting mix here. And when going to the store, you're gonna to want to get a potting mix. Potting soil might be okay to purchase, but the definition is a little bit variable and there are some undesirable potting soils out there. So a potting mix is something that's gonna be more desirable and more of a safe, uh, go-to safe option for a beginning gardener. This is a custom potting mix that I have made up myself, and for an experienced gardener, you might choose to do so, or make your own. So I will have you join me right back here once I add this potting mix to this pot here. So what we've done is we've added our potting mix to our pot here, but we haven't added it all the way to the top. 
we're just looking for enough height in there, just enough so that we can set our plants in here. And then we'll add our final amount at the end. We're going to add our angelonia in first, and I've excavated a hole in the back of the pot just high enough so that when we put the angelonia in, that it sits level with the pot. Being that this is all new material that we're putting in our pot, it will settle in time throughout the summer. So it's okay to plant level with the pot now and expect things to settle throughout time. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to push a little bit of soil here around our plant just so that we can get it set in there before we add our next round of plants. Now, you might have heard before of uh, having root-bound plants and whether you should tease those roots apart. And this is a good example of a plant. This is our petunia, and we have some root-bound encircling roots. And it would be a good idea to tear those apart to encourage the roots to grow outwards rather than being root-bound in the original potted area. So we are just it's okay just to tease those apart just a little bit so that we can plant this plant as well. So I'll have you join me right back once we get these all four put in the pot. We have planted our four flower plants here in the pot and things are looking great. We have them level with the top of the planter that they're in. We've also raised the potting mix level with the top of the planter. Our last step is watering them in and we can just do that with a simple watering can here. And while watering them in, we're going to have to give them multiple small doses of water because the water is going to want to seep over the edge because it's not going to be absorbed in the soil fast enough or as fast as we pour it on with the watering can. So we're going to have to give it these, this pot multiple small doses of water to make sure that the entire pot is evenly soaked before we can stop. And we'll know that we've achieved an even soaking when the bottom of the pot starts to seep water out of that drain hole that we had plugged earlier. So that's when we know that we've accomplished a good soaking watering. After we plant our flowers, a lot of people like to add, a, add some fertilizer because the flowers look kind of small relative to the pot and they're going to grow in time. We're not worried about that, but if you do choose to add some fertilizer, I would like to urge you to use caution and only follow the label directions because while some people like to add some fertilizer, other people like to add a lot more and think that that's better. And that's not always the case because extra fertilizer, especially in the form of nitrogen, can encourage more foliar growth and not as many flowers to come. And that is undesirable when we're trying to actually grow flowers. So with that, I hope that you've learned some things today in planting a decorative flower planter. And good luck to you.